Argentina, Vergoven and Catalano, who really butchered that K1 race yesterday. So the voice of Ivan Lawler, the co-commentator with myself, Dave McLeod, as we say morning and welcome from Lake Jels in the Vian municipality of the central Denmark. Good morning and welcome to the crowd. We had a fantastic Danish crowd that packed in here yesterday afternoon for the Mads Pedersen show, and we're expecting more of those locals. On the water right now, the junior K2s and a big field of youngsters, a mix of pedigree and well-schooled crews, and a bunch of youngsters that are getting their first shot at this level, and it just makes it a really fascinating prospect. Weather conditions are good. That's the method table as we start racing today. Hungary taking a burst yesterday. Six golds taking their total to 13. Spain snapping on their heels thanks to four golds, four bronzes. Ukraine sitting in third, and they'll be celebrating that fact. And there's actually not much that separates Denmark, South Africa, Argentina, Sweden, and Portugal on that medal table. Could potentially have two medals for Argentina this morning. They had two medals in this event last year at the World Championships, and one of those same crews is back this year for more. So it's the uh, junior boys K2 up at the moment. It's one of the youngest crews on the water at the moment. Absolute bundle of nerves at the moment. Jared Shrimpton and Riley Smith, they're under 15s, believe it or not, getting their first taste of international action, and they are up for it. 472 just ahead of them is the Portuguese crew of Batista and Bento. So the course they're going to be taking on occupies the entirety. Uh, it's a super look uh, at Lake Yels. The uh, three and a half kilometer lap takes up the entire course from the start. You go all around to the top boy. You turn around the top turn can. That's lap one, which is a full lap. From there on in, your lap then uh, takes on... The full distance of the course, but of course bolts on the portage, which is the key part of it. The portage going through a jetty takeout and then a beach put in. Gradual left-hand turn around the elbow part of the course, down past the reeds on the right-hand side, down to the turn cans, and then of course you're into the portage. The key thing, however, at the end of the race, is there in front of the crowd and... Uh, a much shorter lap of one kilometer. That is the Polish crew, which uh, we, fe we feel is going to be uh, featuring large in this race. Ivan will take you through that in a little bit more detail. But a big field of junior K2 men in 481 is the Japanese crew of Ueno and Maeda. And that's the Danish crew. They've enjoyed such fantastic support. Oliver Koch and Anton Hinge, who've already raced. In boat 479 is the Hungarian crew of Kolik and Kiss. 488 in the background is the Swedes, Norden Skjold and Soderman. And 479, just in front of them, is Kolik and Kiss. So just like in the K1 yesterday, we're looking at the youngsters here. A lot of testosterone, uh, not so much education time. So we expect incidents right from the start. But the two countries to watch here, Hungary and Argentina. Well, let's add Spain into that as well. So here's the start list. Shrimpton and Smith, Batista and Bento from Portugal, Fleury and Tute from France, Candela and Panassa from Italy, Largo and Fernandes from Spain, they've got pedigree, Schultz and Lonka from Belgium, Han Sasso from Australia, then the big guns, Vin, uh, Vergorven and Catalano from Argentina, so impressive yesterday. It's hard to see past them for a win today. Colic and Kiss could have something to say about that, as could Castilla and Aguiar, European medalists earlier this year. Ueno and Maida from Japan, Wyskowski and Wronkiewicz from Poland, Zeman and Kakeksi from Hungary, Kakeksi third yesterday, outgunned by the Argentinians at the end. Cochrane and Salmon from South Africa, Zugna and Tiapolo from Italy, Miemann and Niehaus from Germany. The list still goes on. Oliver Koch and Anton Hinge from Denmark, Norden, Skjold and Soderman from Sweden. Soderman quite good yesterday. Also Higgins and Harris for Ireland. Uh, Bruno and Pizarro from Argentina, next to Will Short and James Ross from Great Britain. Tenora and Vesa from Czech. And on the outside, part of the TIP program, been here all week, Aguero and Pereira from Uruguay. Big field. Race is going to be made up of six laps, five of them portages, and then, of course, that 
thrilling final lap up to the turn can and then back down to the finish. And there's the crew that we feature as central to this it's race today. really hard to look past them for a win today. They were third last year as underage juniors. And we saw them yesterday. They were super impressive. Next to them, though, the Hungarians. Kolek and, and Kiss. Kiss. And to their right will be Castilla and Aguiar, who was second at the Europeans. The key currency at this level is experience. And if you look at what the Argentinians bring to the party and to a, to a similar degree, the Hungarians, a lot of these crews are racing at international level for the first time and understandably are a bit like rabbits caught in the headlights. But when you're up against a completely schooled, slightly older, some of these youngsters are 14, you're up against 17-year-olds, 18-year-olds. There's an opportunity for youngsters without any pedigree or limelight or um, being tipped by people like Lawler to put a hand up and race onto that front bunch. So it might be crazy for the first lap and a half or two. And then there really is an opportunity for some adrenaline fueled crew to be noticed on the international yeah, stage. I mean, we, we watched the race back in Peter Maritzburg when uh, Varga was racing K2 and two of the young South Africans hung in with them all the way and it, they became the crowd favourite through the laps because yeah. it didn't seem plausible that they'd still be there at the end and they were. And yeah, that, that's an opportunity. There's big waves behind those big guys and if you can ride those waves, then opportunities open up for you very, very quickly. Well, the crowd's already moved into the seats here. So Oliver Cock and Anton Hinge will be getting heaps of unqualified local support and they can bank that and use it. So there's a big group of three, eighth, ninth and tenth from the top of your screen when we look at it. That's the Argentinians, Hungarians and Spanish. Down the bottom end, you've got Argentina next to Great Britain. That's third and fourth up. Argentinians in the white boat there. Is for those of you that are joining us for the first time. Start gates are up. You can see that thin red line between the boys there. Starters get a bit hacked off when you actually push that. Don't want to touch that. But uh, if you jump the gun before the gate drops, you'll probably swim, actually. And away they go. Beautiful, clean start. Straight away. Uruguay looking good on the right hand side there. And the Argentinians in the white boat. Next to the blue boat of Great Britain, Sweden to Argentina's left. But there's the big guns, already affording himself the luxury of a look across. Vamos, Argentina, look and at that. That's the blue boat. boat at the top of the screen. The Uruguayans, bottom of your screen, going their own way. They've been here all week, and they are looking good. They've been practicing their portages over and over, that's for sure. Kolek and Kiss from Hungary. We've got one swimmer already. Oh, my word. And not sure. Two swimmers already. Now, I'm thinking, I'm hoping it isn't, but the blue boat that went over first off, 482 in the water there. It's Poland's Vronkiewicz and Wyskowski. And there's a red and white boat, another 20 metres or so that's also in the drink. There's a blue boat there as well. And that's Just a, a little bit nerve-wracking for the fans from Great Britain. Just trying to see who's who. That's 482. That's, That's the, the poles. poles we spoke about. And there's a blue boat which is almost submerged, which is going to make extraction just a little bit difficult for the RTOs that are busy rescuing these youngsters. And that looks like it could be the Great Britain crew of James Ross, Will Short. Yeah. That's desperately bad luck for those guys. But it's Hungary and Argentina already taking a stranglehold at the front. Spain coming up hard on the left-hand side of the group, coming in a, a bit aggressively. Yeah, that green boat moves out and holds them off. And there's your swimmers. William it's Short and Great James Britain Ross. and Poland. Hungary moving to the front. Oh, More aggression at the back. That blue boat is just having its tail tapped. And that's just not streetwise. Everybody knew that they had to go inside of those turns, but they didn't factor it into the lines they were racing on. So red mist probably amongst these youngsters in the K2s. France at the back of that group. So Argentina with two, Hungary with two, 
Spain with two, South Africa, Italy on the right. Just have a little look back, maybe. Ireland racing across the back of the group. I'd get a chance to have a look at that start again and just see what Italians those... being tapped on the tail. You see them veering off to the right. Yeah, these boys are all over the shop at the moment. Testosterone zone. More aggression oh. with between the green oh, and the and blue. The green there. boat's, boat's going to tap the tail of the boat to their left. Everyone managed it well in the end, but the Czechs. There's another oh, swimmer there's another there. Swimmer, the black I boat's think down. I think that was the Czechs went in there. Nobody touched them. More, it's just all over the shop, this race. It was just overzealous, if anything else. Here they come. But that was South Africa Stefan. into the V behind the Hungarians. Argentina move on the right there. Argentina go to the front. Hungary tuck in behind them. And in the foreground, Stefan Tenora and Carol Vesey are swimming. But let's have a look at that earlier start, and we can see what happened to... But look at the blue boat coming across, just coming across oh. too aggressively. They're going to get their back tapped. There's the tap on the back. They've got nowhere to go. That yellow boat is almost at a 45-degree... There we go. That's, that was the contact with the Being blue boat. Being turned there, the blue boat hit from three, four boats at a time, and boom, straight in. Frustration And then the for poles Great get caught in the consequential traffic jam. I mean, that is a chaotic picture right there. You kind of called that before the start. That's when uh, testosterone overrules race intelligence and you're just going for something that isn't possible. Both those crews there will uh, look back at that video and maybe think that things could have been different. Yeah, heartbreak for these youngsters. You know how much this opportunity means to them. And to, I hope, I hope the equipment is okay. I hope the heads are okay to allow them to continue. So I while the junior boys go around the course, that big wide right-hand elbow, the C2s are on the start line, and away they go. Interesting here, we got the two Moldovans closest to us in red, who were so so strong in the C1s for the first couple of laps but then just lacked the race now to uh, finish the job. The Poles, who retired from the C1 there in shot, Borgil and Zakora. But it's Spain with Busto and Miguel leading out at the moment. So it's going to be Spain, Spain, Poland. We've seen all these usual contenders, Campos and Romero. Romero's already... Campos already won, sorry, the uh, short course and the long course in his C1. Now he's back out for more. Clean sweep will be a, a rare feat. The Moldovans going their own way, as they did in the C1 earlier this week. Ukraine there with Davidov and Yanchuk in the blue and yellow. And the Portuguese, Portuguese looking like they've kind of retire in there. They look, they are. They're kind of turning right, and they're done. Two hundred meter world champs. So that was Souza and Maciel. That's the boat you see on the left of your screen, headed back towards the athlete area, and the C two race looks to be set. Spain, Spain, Portugal, in. Oh. Yeah. Ja, Souza and I think Sergio this, this race will unfold extremely slowly as it did in the C1 yesterday. And we're on for. I wonder if they didn't break some gear either at the start or shortly afterwards. Busto. One of the fabled names in canoeing in that corner of the world. So Souza and Maciel abandoned. I think that means they've abandoned the race rather than they've been abandoned by, well, they've abandoned by their fans other. or they, <laughs> they might have abandoned their families. Either way, they're abandoned. Abandoned ship. So so the, the, the third of the swimmers was the Czech crew. Let's rewind yeah, time. They're in a blue boat. Um, 
in the middle, right in the middle, with a white boat, white tip on a black boat. They just come across to the right, really sharp, braced to stop the collision, and it was the brace that <sighs> took them in. So, architects of their own disaster there, really, and that yep. looked like potentially just a badly set up boat with a rudder that doesn't do the job it's designed to do. And here they come the survivors. <laughs> in the junior men's K2 race. France to the right of the group there. Italy in the blue boat Ooh, with the dark be, blue shirts. There's down, still, there's still, there's still aggression there's going still on. There's still bumper cars going on They're there. the big guns in the blue boat with the blue and white shirts. Two Argentinian crews together. This, that, again. Oh, that again green boat. the is, green boat. This is WWF paddling. It's, it's insane out there. Hungarians in the white boat taking it to them at the moment. So we've got a front group of two, four, six, eight, ten, with two stragglers just hanging on. France in the uh, clowns' outfits just going Oof. round. It's just a description, Dave. This wasn't a criticism. Was, I'm just trying to highlight it for the viewer. It's, it's <laughs> So the Marcel Marceau outfit at the back of the group there. Hungarians at the front. Spanish to their right. Argentina to their left in the blue boat. It's the green boat seem to be causing a few problems for the others there. We'll get a name check on them as soon as we can. The second Argentinian crew at the back of the group with the brownie hats on, blue and white striped shirts. They're looking okay. So it's tension is gradually beginning to settle. Italians on the outside of the group. And if there's a flashing sign you would put over this bunch right now, it would just say, settle, settle, oh, settle. Can you imagine the first portage when that happens? Oh, it's <laughs> it's going to be comedy. So the Danes leading at the moment. Hinger and Koch from Denmark. Not sure we would have had them as top of our list for leading at this stage. But certainly Volgo, Volgoven and uh, Catalano in the blue boat, we expected to be up there. Spain to their right. 475 is Largo and Fernandez, third at the Europeans earlier this year. Bit of pedigree there. And their teammates to their right in uh, 480, which is Castilla and Aguiar. The Portuguese boat of Batista and Bento tucked in nicely. Hungarians at the back of that group just struggling to make contact. They need to get their boat to the tail of the green boat green. before they've reached safety. Uh, and they, they're kind of the wavering. Boat. They're going for the blue. Why would you Why would you go blue well, instead well, of green there? Green boat's got a track record, remember? I think you want to be clear of that. <laughs> That's a fair point. The green boat does seem to be more of a dodgem than a boat at the moment. And, that white and the French have, have sat back behind the green boat. That's, they've fallen out from behind the Argentinians. Sweden leading the chase pack behind these two. South Africans doing well in 4-8-4 four, four there. That's Cochrane and Salmon. And the group now at least organising themselves in some sort of recognised pattern. So it's the Portuguese in the green boat. Batista and Bento. The green, yeah, the, the, they're in the, the, the Portuguese green boat has been the one that's been spicing things up there. It was on the last incident. I'm not sure we can blame them for everything, that's for sure. But that last incident, definitely they were the ones coming in at a slightly chaotic angle. Away goes Spain. Portuguese follow on their tail. Argentinians trying to force their way in. It's going to be contact again there. That green Portuguese boat trying to force its Check way through. Check for Gorvan and Catalano in the blue boat close to us. Unfazed, untroubled. Denmark again take the lead with Hinger and Koch. 
It's going to be some flurries now because the group's changed shape. South Africa challenged for that front V with Portugal. There's going to be a coming together, I think. No, nope, South Africans backed out just in time. Away go the big guns. They've moved up to the Spaniards, squeezed the Danes into the V. South Africa on the left of Vergorven and Catalano. That's Luke Salmon and Bruce Cochran in the South African boat. Everything in my head is going for thinking Salmon's wishing this was an upstream race. <laughs> but <laughs> or it had some, some leaping in it. <laughs> but I'm going to avoid those sort of cheesy puns. Bruno's a strong youngster. He's actually in under 16 still. Around the bottom turn. Spain from Argentina from Spain. So Spain white, Spain blue. Argentina, dark blue. It's going to stretch out at the back around this turn. You can see the second Argentinian crew there really suffering at the back, as are the French. Italians back with them also, and a concerted effort now could thin this group down. Spain pressing on. Solid pace from the Spaniards at the front. The white boat. Oh, and some... Closest, another swimmer. We've got yeah, another one. Is it, There might not be anyone left at the end of this. That's Argentina have gone Argent in. That's a disaster for France Argentina. France struggling to get round their man, round the boy at the same time. Bruno and Pizarro. Caught in the traffic jam at the boy. I don't that, think I've seen one like this before. This is incredible. That now they're going to have to try and swim it across the traffic to get it to the side. But their race is run. They're done. The Italians are coming in at the pontoon here Love as well. Love to see the replay There's something of this. Italians are getting out on the pontoon. Maybe they're going to empty their boat out. I've no idea what, what's going on there. It's a circus. It's a crime scene, Dave. <laughs> So there's, some... there's bodies everywhere. There's going to be chalk lines everywhere after this. Unwell. Absolute nightmare. I know we said... So four away. Big guns in there. And a pretty urgent chasing four as well. So I suspect they might... Bridge, but so Denmark done lost, extremely well. Lost man Spoke standing. to their coaches before. I don't think this was uh, expected. Hinger and Cock there. Vergorven looking over his shoulder. He... Someone like Vergorven, they won't care who catches up. That's not their problem. They'll manage it either way. No, the back four have bridged it. So we're looking at Argentina, Denmark, Spain and Spain are the next two. We have a replay Let's of go that, back to that boy. Oh, our most recent incident. So I mean, don't you see the white boat coming across what? at a wrong angle, tips in, well, Hot. nearly tips in the Italians. That's why the Italians had to empty because they've gone under that boat. And it's just the angles these kids are approaching their washes. I mean, it's but I'm, oh, kind four, of four of the boats didn't even change course to go around that boy. There was a panic amongst the group thinking they had to go right of the boy. That caused the sharp deviation to the right. It's, uh, it's a crazy day out there. Whew. No place for the faint-hearted. Back to the sea race. Thank God that's less dramatic. <laughs> Considerably less dramatic. Campos Spain and Romero sitting alongside their compatriots Busto and Miguel. In front of us, the Argentinians back in their boat and on the chase. Yeah. Formality for them, I'm afraid. They just want to get themselves onto the, the finish sheet. Could win it, actually, the way things are going on at the front, if they're the last one standing. <laughs> it's a war of attrition like in the junior boys' K2. Jenga. Crazy times. Spain, Spain, Poland at the front of the senior men's C2. Tarnowski brothers on their own in fourth place at the moment with Zidai. And Zilani of Hungary. But these are the big guns. Always up the front. It's the first three. 
from the European Championships, and now they're going to be the first three at the World Championships. And this race will just gradually unfold over the next hour and a half. While they're going down to the turn, Will Short and James Ross from Great Britain, the early swimmers, are just passing the front of the stands. I know they brought their fan club. Mum, Dad and both grandparents are in the uh, top of the stand there, and I'm sure they're shouting them on, waving the flag for those boys. And hats off to them for getting back in and doing it. Yeah. That's as good as it gets. Standard was set by the Australian women who swam early on, and despite the fact that their race was totally and utterly gone, jumped back in and finished the race and he really earned some serious kudos from the crowd here and I think that's set the minimum standard. Things looking a little bit spicier in the C2 as they approach their first turn at the uh, stand end of the lake. Got to say that crew of Zakora and Borgil in the colours of Poland is looking very settled and very ominous. They were European champions. The Spanish couldn't match them earlier this year hey. and they both pulled out of the C1 yesterday in preparation for this they did the first few laps then came in getting the nose of their boat very close to the paddles of the Spanish boat in front of them when you go around the turn like that you've got you've got the two choices you're either wide enough to miss the paddle or narrow enough to miss the paddle hitting someone's paddle is uh, generally frowned upon you are cutting it really close or trying to overtake because if you're coming up on the inside, in this case, you're catching the front pedal. Oh, this is going to be tight. This has got to, He's going to have to come into that boy and tuck he in behind it. them to do it. Little nudge on the tail as he does that. Everyone round safely. That's the final boy of the turn, but you have to pass to the right of that one as well. Ooh. We've had a couple of uh, time penalties earlier this week for going through the finish line on the way up the course. You do have to pass to the right of that white boy at the finish line. All three of the C2s did. I mean, I'm just busy puzzling. The chaos in the junior boys K2 to go right at that boy, which the first four boats ignored. That was the bottom like turn. I'm trying to work out which boy caused that panic. I think even, even the replay happened too fast for me. I, I, there was so much going on in that picture. They all went around the turn cans. It's the angle at which some of the boys are going across to find the, the washes that they want. It's just it, unfeasibly steep, and you can't miss a boat like that. That's a real... And the boat you saw heading to the jetty to empty, that was an Italian boat, wasn't it? They hit the side of the Argentinians who swam, and their nose was pushed under the Argentinian boat. They filled up with water at that point, so they had to empty out. I didn't and see that's them quite get clear going thinking. again. It's quite clear thinking of the Italians to actually come in and solve that problem straight away. And we saw their coaches running out onto the jetty to... I don't know if you're allowed to help them even. I, I guess you can uh, yeah, offer them advice. But, uh, yeah, it's mad up there. But Denmark, certainly... They're in the running up there, and I don't think that their uh, team management were expecting that at this stage of the race. So we've got the excitement of the first portage for those junior boys <laughs> in a minute, and <laughs> that's going to be quite something. We've got one of the big, heavy-hitting officials heading our way, so we've either said something wrong or we're <laughs> going to get some information here. Maybe about that boy. <laughs> yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. 478 Argentina and the two Spanish boats 475 and 480. So here's the rub. From that incident down at the turn, four boats missed one of the, the uh, marker boys on the course. And those four boats are Spain 475, Argentina 478, Spain. 480 and Denmark 487. All four of those boats at this next portage, which isn't so far away now, will have to come into the penalty box and sit out a 15 second penalty. <laughs> and the chaos just gets better and better. And they're, they're three of the main contenders for medals in that four. 
He's, there's the Danes on screen now, Hinger and Cock. They've got a 15-seconder, but so have the other three boats. And this is just going to get better and better. It's like watching ping pong balls in a washing machine. It's such fun. We knew it was coming. The Hungarians are the big beneficiaries from this. So they're, they're the boats of class that haven't got a penalty. And Hungary must be licking their lips at the prospect of this. Their guys get a 15-second head start. And the whole race, the nature of this race has just been changed significantly. It's a tough one for the ITOs. They're going to have to pull four boats out of probably 10 charging up that portage. Yeah, they've all got to go to the right into the drinks lane. It's easy when you've uh, got one and you can hold up one number board and pull one crew over. But this, okay, um, we've got a great set of cameras up at the portage. The three favorites for medals all being pulled over. Argentina upping the ante, settling. Who's that coming around on the right-hand side in the red boat? Red boat is Ireland. It is. So well, as we said, the, the door is going to open for France one of these. And oh. <laughs> I think France and is it South Africa having a bit of a coming together there just to keep the spice levels up. Big Argentinian boat. Smoothly and straight across to the V. That must have opened up. It would have been great to have an aerial shot of that because that was a strong move from the Argentinians. So they took advantage of the clash between the South Africans and the French. A gap opened up and they were in it like a rat up a drain pipe. So on that leaderboard, four of the top five as they stand there are going to be heading into the naughty chair. It's going to have to be a, a naughty pew, I think. <laughs> Have to have a naughty area for this one. We've got eight testosterone filled juniors. Again, they're gonna have to hold them down. You have to separate them. Yeah. So, Spain, they're in. Both the Spanish crews are in. Ireland sitting well there on the outside of the group. Will be really interesting to see if the Hungarians will organize themselves for a full on escape plan here when they come in. Hinger and Cock, I think, are going to be the ones who France into the back, South Africa coming in at speed again at the back and again having to brace. It's like a Ireland and having a pop on the outside now, <laughs> trying to take on the blue boat. Nicely done. And leaving. Blue boat nicely dropped back. That's how it should be done. But there's still overlap on the tail of the Spaniards. There's overlap oh, now there's... with the South Africans. And here we go again with the South Africans. Everybody trying to scoot into the gap created by the boats charging forward. You just have to know when that gap isn't yours. And these kids don't seem to know that at the moment. Denmark coming around the outside of Ireland. Again, there's contact. Do it or don't do it. Ireland have to drop back at this point. Or do now it. Now they drop back. Do it and do it accurately. And that's what experience does. So Spain to the side of Hungary. Around the outside. We're looking at Sweden. RTOs must be... Puzzling a plan, plan. yeah. Portugal in the green boat still. Pulling four K2s out of ten charging up without yeah, causing congestion with be anybody worth, being compromised. Be worth watching, that's for sure. Spain, blue boat, Spain and South Africa. Sweden on the outside and the other blue boat from South Africa. That's the youngsters in the front bench. They're doing so well. The under 15s, Shrimpton and Smith. Pete Cole. It's just going to kick off. Hungarians are going to go. Portuguese try and hold them off and do. At least temporarily. They've got 200 metres to go to the bottom turn can now. So intention is to try and thin this up. white boat on the outside of the green boat is just wants to come through. Again, the green boat go. We've got Spain in the blue just tapping the back of the Hungarians oh. again. 
You know what's happening, Ivan? We got we got Portage Red mist here, so I'm I'm holding my head as we come around to these turn cans. It's going to be so so interesting. So Hungary at the front, Spain, Portugal. They'll have the first bite of the cherry going around the turn cans. South Africans just at the back of that group now. They're going to struggle through this, but none of these boys know that there's these penalties. There's some nudging of the tail of the Hungarian boat. They've kept their composure. Well done. There's going to be more. Vagorvan oh, goes right the blue boat's going out wide. Boat. He's taken three with him. They're so strong when they move straight through those gaps. The Argentinians go wide, open the door for the it's, Spanish to get through. It's fortunate for the... Oh, they're all coming left. They're off. all... Oh, my word. Here we go. One, two, three, four, left. Oh, he's got a dead leg in that lead oh, boat. The Hungarians down. got a dead leg. It's the most awful feeling in the world. He can't even move. He doesn't... It, that leg has no feeling in and it at all. And he has to carry that boat. And he cannot run. He cannot run. That is... The Portuguese have dropped their paddle in the water. They're fishing for that. The Argentinians done super well. They knew that. They, they, whoa, he's down, but the boat's down. The clock can start. Yeah. Spanish are going to back up into that port, into that penalty box. They've got to take that boat back, I think. South through Africa come, come through. South Africans. All four are in the penalty box now, and the time is ticking, but nobody's taken advantage of it at this stage. Oh, no, no, no. Argentina. South Africans are in the water. Portuguese have got their paddle. I can't believe they're going to be first away after dropping their paddle. No, it's the South African crew first away. Oh, this is... Bruno Cochran and Luke Salmon go to the front. All the other big guns are back in the water. The Spanish have put their boat on the rudder. Round the outside come the Hungarians. Portugal away. For Gorvan, 15-second penalty is on the front wave. That was well managed. They flew in and flew out. There was absolutely not a second wasted in that. Look at that Argentinian crew. They are just... (laughs) The best in this race. There is absolutely no doubt. 15 second penalty come out of the Portage third and are now on the front wave of the South Africans. And they might actually be going. I don't think he's motivated to go. He doesn't care who's with him. They're going to win this anyway. Right now, the nerves just need to sit. Oh, that's fantastic. That poor Hungarian. I mean, there isn't a worse feeling than that. You get out of the boat and your leg literally doesn't work and it flaps about like a rubber leg. And you've got no feeling in the foot. You don't even know whether your foot's on the floor or not. That's horrible. And it looks so bad. It looks so uncomfortable. Gonna, we're going to replay that whole portage because it's oh, we so have to. spicy. But this, De Bulamanzi will be taking screen grabs of this coach. They coach by Attila Udrovich. Bruno Cochran, who's still an under-16, leading the they're, they're junior make, world. They're making a mistake stopping because those Argentinians don't care who catches up. They're just going to go slow. Portugal, back in them. the game. They lost their paddle at the portage. I couldn't see which of the athletes it was, but they were fishing around in the water for their paddle. There's the second Argentinian boat. They swam, remember? Just going through the motions. Back with Japan. He's biting his lip. It's tough. Not the day they were hoping for at all. I've never seen a race like this. <laughs> As I said, it's like playing Jenga when you've got one Muppet with no sense of responsibility at the bottom. So here's the portage. The Here Hungarians get out. Look at the guy in the back. Kiss. He's got absolutely Kiss. no control over his right leg there. It's comic. It's not, uh, I don't know, comic's the wrong word, Dave. It's awful. It's desperate. You have no idea what that feels like unless you've been there. And I have been there, and it's absolutely hideous. So we're going to get a group of seven back together. Spaniards look like they're in there now. The worst thing in a K2 race like this is you've dropped your partner. You have to be at the back to pick up the boat. There's no way he can drag it on his own no. and wait for you to try and recover and get some feeling back into that leg. So we'll get a check on who's who. We've got Green, Portugal, Argentina, France, South Africa, South Africa. They've done well to get two boats into that. Spain, Hungary and Spain. The, the Spanish will catch up again with... The Danes, it looks like, on their side. Ross and Short coming around the bottom turn. They're doing well. They're not as far behind as they were. They've got Japan in sights now, and that will give them at least a target to catch over the next couple of laps.
Union flags waving. Oh, out of the portage they come, out tidily, up and running. Cheer from the crowd would be good for these guys as they come through. Running well over the portage. Well drilled on the portage. You can't help when you see them doing that well to wonder what could have been but for that early incident. So here we go. Portugal, France, South Africa, Argentina, South Africa 2, Spain 2, Hungary and Denmark all back in that front group. So we're going to have another big portage again. <laughs> and that's a, this race, a proper crowd pleaser. We'll head off to the C2s. And pretty much as we left them. In fact, exactly, exactly as we exactly left them. Exactly as we left them. And uh, we, that might not be the first time we say that, or the last time, rather, we say that today. Interesting that there's been no desire to rotate the pull on this bunch. The poles have been quite happy to sit just where they are there. I think the Spanish, yeah, I don't know. I, I've never raced C2 and actually I have no intention of ever racing C2. But in the K1s at least, the second wave out is not as effective as the Good. first wave out. So the Spaniards have basically put the Polish second wave out and they'll keep them there because it's the hardest they wave. Squ- Assuming it's the same deal as the K1s, which I might just be talking out of turn, but yeah. that's never stopped us before, Dave, to be fair. Well, someone will come leaping in with if we don't, If we don't us. know it, we'll make it up. Poland, well, having said that, Poland going around dropping the outside. around the back. And I'd be really interested to see now if the Spanish change the lead to put them on the second well, wave the again. The Spaniards are now altering course, I suspect, oh, to try and portaging. go right. We're portaging, aren't we? We are that's portaging. It. So, one Spanish boat, Busto, heading left. Both Spanish boats are heading left. The poles are going right. The poles just miss the first grab at their cockpit. Empty out. Up onto the shoulders to empty out. Quite an efficient empty out from Poland. And through they go. Bourgil and Zucora. Campos Romero. Probably the favoured of the two Spaniards. That's the second crew there with Busto and Miguel. First into the water. Good effort but from the pole seconding crew there because it's quite a challenge to get two juice bottles onto the necks of two speeding athletes as they come through quite a limited seating, uh, seconding zone. So I'd be interested to see here whether the Spanish just put... Well, the poles are going up the left-hand side anyway. They obviously like wash hanging on that side. So our lack of knowledge about C2 racing has shone through it, there, we, Dave. We've, we've it's absolutely shone through. We've highlighted our own inadequacies superbly as we move on we see the two guys from moldova there it looks like they spend a lot of time in the eco sport gym. they do i think they get their money's worth out of the gym yeah that's a membership well spent there i'm sure somebody will come charging through the door with a, with an axe or some sort of viking weapon if we get it desperately wrong we, we do still have an X unaccounted for, Lola, which and is... Back to the causing, K2s. Here we go. Stress. Game on. Six boats. South Africans in the blue boat. They're just g- racing the Portuguese. It's going to be... Oh, Portuguese won that one. There was a V-Wash open, and South Africa just got beaten to it by the Portuguese. We've got the big officials coming back. There could be more. <laughs> Okay, so we're being fed technical information from the big cheeses. And there was a query as to some of those boats miss two boys, others only miss one boy. And the question is, why didn't the ones who got two miss two boys get a double punishment? And the rule doesn't read like that. The rule doesn't relate to the number of boys. It just relates to 
shortening the course. And if the official believes that the boats have gained an advantage by shortening the course, it's only one penalty, which is a 15-second penalty. If it was a major shortening of the course, then it would be the next level of punishment is a disqualification. So they use their discretion to say that the short course wasn't shortened significantly and it's just one 15-second penalty. It's all happening. And while we've been chatting, the second of the boats that was lagging off the back is just about to reconnect, coming up on the left-hand side. Which brings it up to 10 again, I think. France so, sitting at the front. France, Spain, Hungary to the right of his shot. Portugal in the green boat. South Africa in the blue boats. Just Flerith. coming on to the back of the group. Could be Denmark. They should. It's going to be easier behind the blue boat of South Africa. Once they get their breath back, it is Denmark on the outside of the group there, just to tuck in behind the blue boat. Mayel Fleury, Marius Tutti, the two athletes in the front boat in the French colours. Spanish just look over the shoulder there. Oh, Danes are looking a bit ragged on the outside there. Yeah. Blue boat of Argentina. Having a little discussion between the two of them. A little look over his shoulder. Have a have something to eat, mate. Yeah, that's it. Vergaven and Catalonia. If they just manage their race from here, they are in a great position. The Danes just can't get contact. They need to get to the right of that green boat on the tail of the blue boat. <sighs> Uh, it's a long way to there. Currently, they're rolling down the big waves on the outside of the group. That will serve them well until they come to the turn just before the portage. There. It's like a cat trying to get out of a wet bath, just going nowhere fast. So France lead, and everything calms down at least temporarily. The Danes. That's a close-up of the Danes. Sticking manfully to the task. Cock and Hinger, the local crowd would love to see yeah. them be right in the mix. They when they get they, to the they've next picked portage. that nice big wave out to the left and they're doing a good job of staying with it. French K2s, I think we're going to see French K2s figure highly in the senior men later on today. It seems that they've got their K2 well drilled. Spain on the outside in the blue boat, Portugal in the green boat, South Africa also blue and the Danes in the white boat there just rolling down the waves wide of the group which will be great until a minute or so's time when they go around the turn and they'll just be strung out just that little bit. Hungary closest to us in the main group. So we have another portage in prospect in just two minutes' time. This time, no penalties as far as we know in commentary. And I'm going to keep banging their drum, but that, that South African K2 of Jared Shrimpton and Riley Sin. And the 15s, with what's been going on here, I mean... They really are doing so well that to sit on that front bunch. Very impressive. I mean, once these groups settle, the waves are pretty big. And you, if you manage it well, you're okay. At the back of the group, you don't get caught for the change of speed so much as the boats at the front. So it's a little bit softer ride at the back. You just have to keep your wits about you because it also is a little bit crowded back there. So they're in the right place. Danes doing the right coming thing. back Danes in. coming in for that tail behind the blue boat. It's just as on the approach to the portage. They've ridden that wide way for as long as they dare. And now they know that they just have to make contact. And they've got it. Neatly done. They want to go behind the blue one there. Yeah, they see boy issues on the Are turn. Are they going to make it? Not quite going to make it over the bump there. 
They're going right around that's the outside. Hard. That's they've, hard going around that side. I think they've got plans to take out on the right-hand side of the now portage. Now they're coming to the inside of the portage. Into the turn. They could pick off one or two here and get back in contact with the group. So France leads. Spain, Spain touching on their France. Inside. A little bit of pressure on the South Africans who were in the V. They're going to have to drop back. Denmark getting spit out at the back of the group there. For Gorvan. And a glare from the Argentinians. He is proper pissed with whoever touched his <laughs> tail there. And that was that was a, could you not do that again, please, kind of look. Pardon moi. He's trying to come like to that. the left of the land of the stage. So he's trying to duck round the back. Here he goes. Left of the land of the stage with the French. To the right goes Spain. To the left France are leaving Spain. the boat. The Slow for France. Argentina also. Argentina, a little tatty. bit shabby. Greenboat of Portugal, very slow out the water as well. And the Danes back with them. But it's France through. Argentina. Argentina. Spain. Trotting through the porters. There is literally no stress at all in that Argentinian boat. Spain, Spain. That's the white boat followed by the blue boat. On the inside of Spain is South Africa. They've refueled. Second blue boat, South Africa. Portuguese have run well to get back in contact. But away go the blues. France with them. Chaos back at the port is still. There's oh, boats some... on the sand. The South oh, Africans are stuck in the super sand. Super slow. Riley Smith and Jared Shrimpton. Hungarians back there, though. Could be a lift to the front. So the Hungarians are going to do that. the work. Danes have done too much work to claw back from there. So those two relying heavily on that white boat of Hungary. Yeah. That's the one in the center of the three at the back. And it's a long pull back. Portugal did well from where they were on the exit to come out of this fifth. Hungarian Uber being and Catalano. By those two. Another couple have been abandoned, <laughs> presumably not by their parents. <laughs> but that was the Italian crew that had to empty out of the landing stage. They were super unlucky to be caught in the incident with the second Sweden's Argentinian boat. Sweden's the second bunch from Ireland. Sweden, Ireland. I really don't think the juniors need rousing music on the portage to add an extra level. Especially of, the Rolling uh, Stones. <laughs> uh, uh, I think they're fine with their motivational levels without the rousing music. But uh, the rousing music does it for the crowd. And we've got a good crowd here this morning. In fact, the way this race has played out, some calming classical music might be Yeah, I think we need maybe a bit of easy jazz. A little, little bit of Brahms or yeah. something that might just settle the nerves a bit. I think some of these are Brahms and Liszt, by the way, they're driving. <laughs> uh, Australia running through. And the Argentinians we spoke about just a minute ago going through the drinks lane at the back of your picture. They're joining the dots. That's... They put a handle in front of the front cockpit, and the front person carries that. Oh, they're oh in. and they're in the drink. The classic roll over to the outside of the boat, getting in too quickly. It's looking like some They've sort of folk dance. They've got to take their time. <laughs> take their time empty and make sure all that water's out. Get it right second time, lads. And in they go. Deep breath. Compose yourselves. They've they're got gone. some good company there. That's Uruguay with them there. Uruguay, Argentina, and Australia... Like we said earlier, that Uruguayan boat was here earlier in the week on the tip camp. And the Hungarians have brought the Danes back, but the South Africans may be just off the back there in the blue boat. There's every possibility for them to scramble back before they get to that top turn, Ken. I'm not holding out as much hope as you, Dave. I'm sorry. There's fight in that dog, and that's what's needed right now. They're just clinging on. They've got away from the Danes, and we're going to move over to the C2s. And guess what? Da -da -da -da. The poles have moved up. They, A we, change we... of order. No one was expecting that. Oh, the that. poles are going. This, we've timed this perfectly. Just in time to see the poles, Borgil and Zucora, go to the front. We were just puzzling about how they'd been sitting on the third wave. So the Spaniards flanking either side of them at the moment. These guys are roughly at the halfway point in their race. 
Spain, Poland, Spain. The Moldovans haven't given up that chase, you know. I think they're closer than they were on the last lap. And then the Hungarians further back, 150 metres or so behind. The Moldovans still in with a shout. The Tarnoff, she's... 75 metres back. There they are in shot. Going halfway between the bobble hat and the bandana. It's a strong statement. This is their view. They're looking up at those three. And just trying to see where they are on the course. They've still got quite a long way to go to the portage. And those Tarnovshis are closing on them all yeah. the time. You were teasing the old days of sea racing when it was Speedos as mandatory kit. It, the fashion changes in sport all the time. And, yeah, back in the 80s, Sometimes it's early up to 90s. The federa federations take the lead. I mean, federations for beach volleyball, for example, set maximum specs for kit to try and make it as appealing to spectators and TV. Maybe I think, I think that's probably a subject we need to stay away from, Dave. It would certainly... <laughs> Let's, let's stick with the canoeing, shall we? Because I don't want to get into a discussion about the kit in beach volleyball, and I think it's probably wisest you don't well, you, either. You started the Speedos. Speedos was a fashion statement in canoeing. I was just, it was a historical comment. You're going off track horribly. <laughs> You're leading us. Okay. Well, we'll try and avoid violence. Yeah, think, having spent oh, two days. Oh, well, that's days. a nasty shot there. Yeah, <laughs> Can well, you believe they put those two clowns on screen? And there's a spelling mistake there. Look at that. I mean, that bit there. Well, you, it's gone now. Yeah, it has gone. So, yeah. so that was us, briefly. Fortunately. It must be said, without yeah. any cultural or Viking weapon. Yeah, I, it is weapon-free in here today, which is quite relaxing for me, to be fair. My, my, my armourer is on duty. Uh, and we'll get an upgrade on the Battle X. So coming in, about a minute less to the second portage is the C2s. This time it's Poland in the lead with Spain and Spain flanking them. Romero Campos to their left. And Busto and Miguel to their right. I must just tell you, Ivan, since I brought the battle axe out yesterday, I got, I, think you... I got cornered on social media by a bunch of people not praising me for what I was doing, but leaping to your defense, which I thought I wasn't going to tell you, but I have. They said, please don't hurt Ivan. We like him. There's always someone out there who support you. It's your mum under 20 disguises, I think. Poland left. Are they? No, they're going right. Poland right. Ooh. Romero. Spanish. And Campos left. And the other Spaniards behind the poles. Quick grab of the boat. Poles good. Spain good. Spain too. A little bit slower. They're out now though. And the run through the portage. Number two. For the poles, it's a not negotiable empty of the boat as they step onto the jetty. We could be down to two here. Second Spanish boat goes into the You know who lane. this benefits? If it goes down to two is the Moldovans. The Moldovans, yeah. There could be a dice for bronze. So those two are away. It's Spain not that two. Big a gap. It is. It, you don't see closing up much in these races. Let's have a look at the red shirts. There's your two leaders. And where are the red shirts of Moldova? Looking at the flags in the background, Ivan, the wind became an issue yesterday and it does tend to pick up here over Lake Yells. And it's, this is only session one and it's already stronger yep. than it has been on session one. So it could be windy this afternoon. Away go the Moldovans. And they can see one Spanish crew ahead of them. Off the pace now. Hungary coming through. Oh, taking all the... That's, uh, that's, that's almost embarrassing. My word, that's like... Have a sandwich. Can you see the menu? Kit Kat. Yeah. Massage. 
give the missus a quick call and carry on. For canoe stronghold like Hungary, a portage like that is uh, low grade. It's, Sorry, guys, it's but it is hard to process. Yeah. And somewhere in Hungary will be a crew that just lost out in the selection race thinking, oh, we wouldn't have done that if we'd got that shot. <laughs> but that'll just spice up the domestic yeah. scene the next time they meet on the water. So they're currently in fifth position. With. So there you have it. The Moldovans gain 20 seconds on that lap over the lead group of Poland, Spain and Spain. Another 20 seconds would... Oh, they've what actually is, put their paddles down in the distance, the Moldovans now. We can see that from here. You can't see it. Are oh, they back up and running now? I don't know what was happening up there. And it might have been drinks because I think they came and got drinks on that last portage, so they might be adjusting but drinking. Spain system. look like they're still trying to reconnect with the front two. Or scamper away from the Moldovans. They're coming back, back to, to the, the junior K2s. K2. Still a massive, massive group. Spain leading. I think. Argentina. Argentina tucked in the V. For Gorvan. Oh, no, it's France leading. Sorry, my apologies. Spain just to their left. South Africa Argentina to their right. the diamond. South Africa to their right. Hungarians in the white shirts. Back of shot. France have done a fair share of the leading, especially on that first lap. Spain two in the blue boat on the outside. Then it's the Danes still in the game and the second South Africans. And our under-15 crew of, of Jared Shrimpton and Riley Smith hanging in. Coming out to the left-hand side of the group as we see it. They were a bundle of nerves this morning, but they've really made the most of this opportunity. They're making hard they, work they, of it at the moment. They've painted themselves into a bit of a corner coming yeah. out on the right there. That's the second of the Hungarian crews there, Volek and Kiss. Kolek, rather, and Kiss. They're off the pace. That was that painful portage. Bit of pressure Spain from the Spaniards, coming up hard, both trying to, Spanish boats. Trying to take on their teammates. What they're trying to do here is actually push their teammates ahead of the French. French are challenged on the right side by the South Africans. South Africans squeeze in and look at Vergorven trying to hold that Whoa. V. It's not his to hold, and there's contact. Moves back. Took a chance there, Vergorven. Didn't need to do that. Just fancied having a pop at it. And off the back. South Africans suffer there. Vergorven will come all the way around the left side, I think, now. Just to get back into a more... Com Here we go. All the way around enough, the left enough. and onto the front of the Spaniards. And that's that's a proper display of power. Done with ease. That's a, uh, that's a message to ever cut him off. Yeah, you don't want to be in that race against those two boys. They're just better than the rest. Hungarians drop round the back to come up behind Vergorven. South Africans, oh, how much longer they got, Dave? They Hungarians are coming all the way around really the outside. They're going to do or try and do what the Argentinians just did, but I don't think they're going to make it hold because you've got to rely on the Argentinians dropping back, and they're not going to do it. Look, Hungarians come up a little bit. Vergorven speeds up. And moves out to yeah, the they, left. That's standard move. They need to tuck in behind that Spanish boat. They just... Oh, the Danes there hang off in the and back. Chilling. That's a tough route for them. Settling at last. Hungarians try again. It's just a crazy move because they're not going to beat the Argentinians. Like, once you've lost that battle twice already, you don't have a third pop at it. Yeah. You just, it's a, it's just a, settle it's a for hand, some... he's got a handoff every time. So. Yeah. Round the turn they go into the next portage. Strap yourselves down. Here we go. For Gorvan, this Argent time Argentina makes a serious move. 
Danes are the ones suffering at the back. Hungarians come through nicely on the left-hand side in the space that was opened up. South Africa nicely positioned. Yes, they They're are. They're going right. Very well positioned. If they can get out Spain, and get going quickly. Spain come left. Portugal go right in the green boat. South Africa first to rise. Neatly out and onto the jetty. Spain having a bit of a hash of it at the back. They've lost some ground. There's boat emptying going out. We're not going to... Vergorven comes through the drinks lane. Drink over the top of the head. One and a bottle change. One and a bottle change by a Good supporter. Job. Is. <laughs> That's Good a job. solid job. Spain, South Africa. Straight in. France, your young South Africans, Dave, their days at the front group may be numbered no. because there's not a strong boat back there this time to pull them through. Spain lead from South Africa. Hungary just going around the back of the South Africans into the V. And we've got a nice lead group now. I fancy they'll get back there. From the same paddling school as the junior girls that got the medal for South Africa. Denmark taking the Portuguese out to the side there, hoping to run down the big waves again. They've run that plan once. It worked for them last time. This time, it's a bigger ask. What they need to hope for is that the Argentinians get pushed to the front because they'll slow this group right down. So Spain, Argentina, Denmark just moving out to the left side. South Africans look very comfortable there, liking them. Here we come, Sweden. Hungary too. His legs seem to be working now, and the Italians. More information coming in. <laughs> oh, no, it's just the official. Apologies if you lost us on the live stream for a bit. That was a technical issue here at HQ. Pace has slowed down and they are bolting themselves on at the back. Four has become six and other two sniff an opportunity to get back onto the front bunch. Ireland, Argentina and Belgium running through the portage. Not sure if he was bobbing his head to the music, which is a feature Oops. of the Porching Zone, or whether he's just. I was picking up on that. He was just having a, a fun little run. Just a little, little jaunty head roll there. Ireland with Argentina. Ireland were up there for so long. Did a good job. So the one remaining Italian crew. This is the Uruguayans. Nice work by the South Americans. I think they've, you know, the, I, I was training with them earlier in the week. I say training with them in the loosest possible sense. Obviously, Peddling because they're quite a lot better than I am. But their quality on the water is much higher than where they are now. So I think they've had race management issues, maybe not having enough time Experience. in fields like this. Yeah. And, uh, they're back further than they than they deserve to be, frankly. So nice group shot there. Denmark to the left of shot. In the green boat is Portugal. Leading is Spain, Argentina to their left, South Africa to their right, Hungary in the V wash at the front there. And we're going to head back it's to clock back to the C two race. It. It's the C twos. Poland, Spain, Spain. Campos and Romero in the red C2. Sitting in the center of your screen. I feel a mini egg coming on. Oh, okay, here we go. To the world that hasn't had breakfast yet, you're going to have to listen to Lola crunching a mini egg. 499 is the Spanish boat of Fernando Busto. 
and Diego Miguen. See the graphic at the bottom there. The Moldovans don't seem to have made any inroad. Spaniards did catch up, and that will have deflated the Moldovans a little bit. 160 meters. Meter. Well, you're rounding it up there, Dave. I mean, give them some credit. <laughs> 50 seconds, <laughs> the distance, and it wasn't 50 seconds last time. So they've lost ground and are currently being hunted down by the Hungarians, but that is a long gap between all these groups. So no changes really are going to happen in this race. And this is going to be down to the final portage. Long, lonely day for the Moldovans. Not for want of application. They've, they've been good. They've been strong. As they come up towards one of the many vessels that are carrying our ITOs. Good point about our ITOs and the volunteers that are making things happen here. The Danish Canoe Federation has really done an exceptional job in rolling out the infrastructure here, but you can put in all the picket fences and boys that you want. If you don't have people on the ground, it's not going to work. And what has been remarkable is to see Danes from all over the country put their hands up to work as volunteers and officials here. We've been heaping the praise on the town of Yels for their hospitality and the volunteers that have been working here. But the officials that are wearing the um, mythically colored shirts, the hierarchy of shirts, and the volunteers that have been working on the course have driven here and traveled here from their homes in every corner, including right up in the north, to be part of this, to make sure that this is, one, run properly, and two, something that Denmark can be proud of. So a virtual high five and pat on the back to all the Danish officials that have sacrificed this entire week to make sure that this event is good. Tuck. Nicely done, Dave. Credit where credit's due. All these events run off volunteers. Without volunteers, events don't happen. And that pretty much filters down through the whole sport into the clubs and the federations and everything. So, I've always felt, um, and we're heading into an interesting discussion here, that the backbone of the sport is not the national federation or, or the, the executives that sit in offices and boardrooms and take sweeping decisions. It's the clubs. And you can drill that down a step further, and it's the families that make up those clubs. Without that, the sport would collapse like a deck of cards. And it's interesting to see how many athletes, when they're walking around the village, are prouder to walk around in their club jackets That's and beanies true. and caps as much as they are in their national colors. In fact, I'm sitting here today in my club shirt, Dave. Yeah, let's cut to that, Cameron. You'll see Lawla explaining what the uh, <laughs> colors of Elmbridge are. So if you... Is there an Elmbridge merch store that anybody can uh, get? Not here, to? not here, but uh, I'm sure you can get stuff online if you look hard enough and it's all out there. C2s coming in for their third portage. We saw the Spaniards in the white boat suffer on the last one. They lost about five, six lengths, but no break was made and they back in. And we've said this over and over again at this level, the, the mechanics and the drill of getting out and putting in for a portage should be second nature. You should have done it so many times that you can do it in your sleep. And you watch how military and how disciplined the poles are on their takeout. It is identical every time, apart from the fact that they scarcely make a mistake. Watch the way they do that and, and the mechanisms. It's been so well drilled. It's hard not to be impressed by it. And it always, and watch them, they might just throw me under the bus here properly. But it normally involves... <laughs> <laughs> that speedy leap out of the boat, that synchronized flip of the boat over so that you can get any water out before you've even run a step on the portage, and then they're gone. So please don't let me down, boys. Please don't let me down. They're actually going on One the out, left. Two out. One, two, boat. Oh, no, he's taking off his back. But there, the boat's over. He's dropped his drink bag on the jetty, which is acceptable. It is dry land. It's not in the water. As long as your team officials scamper to go and get it. They're coming through the drinks lane this time. Spaniards not doing that. You see, they've got two long laps to go now, so they, they, that's part of the race plan. Refuel with two full laps to go. Interesting. Campos and Romero sped up on that to try and get to the end of the portage, um, the end of the barrier in the middle of the portage first, and the poles just outran them. And that might be significant when we come to the final portage. But it is Borgil and So you, you, you made a point there about the drills being drilled coming in and out of the portage. And that's, that's one thing. It, it's frankly not that difficult to be drilled coming in and out. And in this group, it's fine, especially for the Moldovans here. They can do their dream portage every time. They're on their own. 
move that into the junior boys crew when you've got all that chaos going on around you and it's not particularly how well drilled you are it's how well managed you are and how you see what's happening around you and react to what's happening around the you. The decisions you take yeah. in the heat of the moment. Yeah, you can be drilled as you like, but if you get out in the wrong place at the wrong time or fight the wrong people, then you're in a world of trouble. So it's really hard to train and coach portages for those junior boys because they will never experience this at home. I did see one video from South Africa as uh, Lee McGregor was coaching portages with some real youngsters. And he had them coming into a pontoon. They had to get out, run along, and get in. Might have been a riverbank, but in and out, fairly straightforward. Throughout the whole run, he was literally running alongside them, screaming at them right in their ears, giving them abuse and all sorts, just to add a layer of stress to their portage. And I thought, although it looked like the uh, the work of a madman, it was well thought out and, and probably served quite a good purpose for those kids. I think back to that K1 race yesterday where one of the K1s in the portage just spun out sideways and blocked off, cordoned off the rest of the portage. And yeah. there would have been such a temptation. There was a Spanish paddler coming just behind them. There would have been such a temptation to try and Ed Moses leap over the boat or do something silly to try and stay in the race. But he just kept his head, waited patiently, got the gap, and then moved through. No Ed drive. Moses is a very age-specific reference. Easy. <laughs> Okay, back to the K2s. So yes. I think your South Africans are in that lonely position off the back now, Dave. Hats off to them. Oh, we got they a South Africans at the front. There you go. France, Argentina, Spain on the outside, Spain in the V, Hungary at the back there. And hats off to those Danes. They have worked hard to stay in this group. Portugal in the green at the back. So the Argentinians happy to let the South Africans do the work. The Argentinians have done very little in this race at all. A couple of displays of power. They won't be too rattled by the fact that they don't have their compatriots on. I mean, they they paddled beautifully as a team in the K1 race yesterday. Yeah. But it's not going to be an issue here. They're just too good for this field, I think. So to beat them, you'd need to destructure and stress this. Yeah, you're not going to do that. Luke Salmon and Bruno Cochran. He's a Bruno sitting in the back of that boat's an under-16. Core of his training is for sprints. There's a little flurry at the front there. As we look at Portugal... <sighs> Here we go again. So Spain seemingly tried to move from the V up inside the Argentinians. There they go. There just there isn't a place for that. Argentina being challenged by the Danes. That won't happen. Here we go. There's your display of power. South Africans get squeezed back. They've got no choice. On to the Spaniards who are going to try and well, the, the South stick Africans with need that. to dibs the diamond. But dibs the diamond. That's off to. Um, the Argentinians there, they moved out when they didn't need to to give the Spanish and the South Africans time to arrange themselves. Yeah, it's maturity above their years. It's, yep, it's very impressive. Much so. It's really impressive. Spain now coming around the outside of their teammates. Oh, oh no. I love a swimmer. That's, the, that's uh, Hungary. No, it's not. It's the it's Danes. It's the Danes. Oh, no. oh that's heartbreaking. We'd love how, to get a replay of that. Let's, how did that even happen? Oliver Koch and Anton Hinger loved. We we got caught with our pants down. We didn't see it happening. Let's see if we can hustle a They've replay. They've only got a little way to go to the portage. Yeah, look they at haven't. They're going. They haven't lost much time. They've got in in the middle of the lake and they're going. That's a super recovery from the Danes. So France. What happened here? We here? Go. here we so go. So the Hungarians are closing in on the Danes here, squeezing them into the Portuguese. Nothing's touched them yet. Whoa, nothing happened nothing to them. Nothing touched them. Nothing happened to them. They just fell out. That's a complete... And they fell left. There was no paddle contact. There was nothing. no contact with the green boat. Nothing at all. That's just bizarre. That's a complete puzzle. Well, we've been treated to a bit of everything this morning, haven't we? Wow. You couldn't have scripted more drama into a race if you'd tried. And we're down to seven. 
Who France at the front. Portugal always seem to be suffering coming into these portages, but they always come out of them fairly high up the group. France leading to the left. Spain to the right. South Two Spanish crews. Argentina going, going left. Right. South Africa going right. It's all looking clean and composed. Portuguese last to rise. France good. Spain good. South Africa good. Hungary having to empty out. Hungary They're slow. They're in a spot of bother they, now. They, oh my the Hungarians word. are now in a spot of bother. France running well. Spain running well. Spain two through the drinks lane. French in and away. Start of the last full lap for the junior men. Oh, That's the Danes. That, but I mean, these They've guys done have well. done so well. Have done well. I want the Danes to give these two a huge round of applause as they come through the seconding zone. The finger of fate came down and inexplicably tipped them out. But look at them. They haven't given up for one second. Oliver Koch, Anton Hinge. Kept his glasses on through the whole incident. <laughs> That's super impressive. It should be a 15-second penalty for splashing our camera. Well, I think we need to appeal for a new volunteer with a tissue whose job it is to come in after every portage okay, so and just clean the lens. Portuguese going to make it back. It's Hungarians at the back of that group. There's the Danes. It's um, well, it's a long way back to that front group from where they are. Unsurprisingly, you don't take a swim and stop to empty your boat without losing a lot of ground. They're applying themselves to the task, they, though. They're 110 percenting in their comeback, and it's super impressive. Tell me, that, to... tell me that doesn't look like a Viking warrior. It's just, I think uh, it's the, the attempt to shake off the snot bubble that's on his nose there. <laughs> He's, is, uh, he's okay. frustrated by it. Uh, the... Oh, great the efforts from them. Proper good job. Great, great, great efforts. South Africans back now with the Swedes there. They've been overtaken by the Czechs. They've blown, I think. They've, they, had a, they had a proper good day. Just looking a little bit ragged, a little bit desperate, overforcing it. They're not going to get back. Not giving up, we know. They've already demonstrated that to us. Just settle. Seven. So gradually the stress levels reduce at the front. That's your Hungarians. End of that the road. That looks like a retirement. End of the road. Kiss and Kolek emptying that boat. Right from that first portage. When uh, the legs went, there was no real coming back from that. It hasn't been a good day. At the Usually your leg goes when the boat has a lean and there's pressure on one of your butt cheeks that's not I'm on the other I'm wondering if and, there isn't a technical that's just finally tipped them over that. Horrible day out. Pass me an egg, Lolo. It's my turn to crunch. So he unloads six eggs. Commonly known in the egg world as half a dozen, Dave. <laughs> no, these boys are carrying on. Oh, well done. That's the spirit. Half a dozen will render me occupationally incompetent, so I'll just take two. So kiss and collect. Move on. Well done. After what well done, looked lads. all... Every bit like a retirement. They've decided to press on. Hungary coming down to the put-in. Front of the race, Argentina, Spain, Hungary, South Africa, France, Spain and Portugal. Denmark on the bottom of that list, somewhat off the pace now after their swim. We're down to seven. We'll just drift over to the other race on the course. We know what the podium's going to look like. Who's going to hold which medal? That's the only question to be solved. 
This is the second to last long lap for the C2s. In the junior men's K2, we have one more portage. It's the most significant portage of their day. Well, you say that. What about that first one? Yeah, oh. That was significant for a number of people. That's going to be a but, highlight uh, video on uh, social media for years to come, I'm afraid. So the three C2s content to just bide their time. Another full lap to go. They will have had plenty of time to assess how their competitors are. And then, of course, the crucial question is, this is going to come down to an end sprint from the final turn. Who's got more matches? Your guess? Before I, I have know, to weaponize I'm the just discussion. Going, I'm just going with form that, you know, the Polish maybe. But Romero, uh, Campos rather, hasn't lost a race this weekend. So his confidence is sky high. He's in the red and black boat. The other Spaniards, Busto and Miguel, uh, maybe, maybe I'm going to write them off. That'll give them a boost. And <laughs> I'm going with the fairy tale to make newspaper headlines around the world as Campos completes the complete a clean sweep. And then the statisticians can go scuttling through the books to see when the last time somebody won every senior C medal. They could try. Is he part of the famous Busto family? No idea. I wouldn't have thought so. Not in the sea boat? No. I mean, that's a splitter if, from a kayaking family. I mean, if someone in your family did take up canoe paddling, probably you'd oh, disown they'd, them. They'd have Christmas on their yeah, own, yeah. yeah. Beginning to get so. worried about where that missing axe is. Spain, Spain, and Poland. Actually, we don't know that the axe was ever rehomed last night. We had a random lady come and pick it up from our cabin under the guise of taking it back to where it belonged, only to have 10 minutes later the guy who actually owned the axe come and ask us the for genuine it. Viking, the genuine Viking. The genuine Viking, yeah. yeah. So we did flick through the local news this morning to see if there had been any axe murders over the evening period. So far, we're in the clear, Dave. The axe has got my DNA on it. I'm, I'm not going home if there's been a, a violent incident. Plus, there's visual evidence of you using it on somebody. Yeah, it's horrible. It's, just yeah. a, it's a setup. The whole thing is you've a been, setup. You've been framed. Somebody probably held up the sweet store with my axe. That's where all these chocolate eggs came from this morning. It's you. I'm saying nothing. You bastard. <laughs> I think that's a bit strong, especially in public, Dave. I'll uh, quickly distance myself from Dave and his amateur comments. It is like a little bit of a care project for me working with Dave. Getting swiftly back to the sea race. Spain, Spain, Poland. Nailing my colours to the mast. It's going to be Romero Campos. Okay, I'm going to go for Poland then. And I have got Pick three chocolate eggs say that it's Poland. All right, up yours to a whole packet. Come on, see your three, raise it to a whole packet. <coughs> Vamos, Campos. Don't expect much movement here. They've still got another full lap to go before they come down to the turn. They're coming into a portage in about 20 seconds' time. That drone shot you're getting is immediately above the spectator area and the finish. The poles will be on the inside of the turn. On your last time, they swung out wide. So Spain, Spain, Poland as they come into the portage on lap five of the C2. The pole is still hanging on the inside now. Just a gentle contact on the inside of that Spanish boat. It's civilized Actually contact. Actually helps them both it's get around. It's civilized the turn. contact. It's now they're moving to the outside. There's Spain, Spain. Probably the favoured Spanish boat in the red. Second Spanish boat in the white. Polish go to the right hand side of the landing stage. Two Spaniards come left. Great overhead shot of the portage there. Spain up 
and away. Beautifully Spain away. two up and away. Poland up, emptying. Flicking the boat over. And away. They've got that routine and it works very well for them. How their boat slide stays on during that routine beats me. It's remarkable. But it's Spain, Spain and Poland some way off the back here as they come through the portage. There might be some words of encouragement from Campos and Romero to their teammates here. But I don't think the gap's enough to warrant a full-on charge. Great put-in from the Poles from being flagging at the back. They've got themselves right back into contact. Zucora and Borgil, nicely done. They often go out wide. That's exactly what's happening here. Restoration of the status quo. It'll be one more lap like this. And then things will get sporty. It's beautifully cool. Wind hasn't really picked up significantly. It's a still a slight westerly. In and come the Moldovans. Ripping that boat out of the water. Compared to the weights those guys lift, that boat must feel like a matchstick, I'm yeah. guessing. Very cool booties they're running in as well. I think that's an oxymoron, they call that, Dave. Cool booties. Booties are not cool. No, no. Okay. no. There's no, in no world is a booty. Well, they are when they knit you some when you're first born. They're quite, they're quite sweet, aren't they? But once you're a grown man, wearing booties is not a desirable look. I don't, I, I don't think. I mean, it's just an opinion. I want to sit you down around a table with these two afterwards and discuss <laughs> booty. <laughs> I'll watch. May, may, maybe to their I'll face, watch. I may have a different opinion. You, you may be right. You'll put yourself behind a plexiglass yeah. screen if you yeah. have that discussion. Actually, on second thoughts, the booty and bandana combo is one of the all-time greats. I think so. Imagine raising that to booty, bandana and speedo. <sighs> now you're talking. These guys are looking broken. Oh, it's the empty. <laughs> what? Nothing. No Literally <laughs> nothing. That's someone who just thinks, you know what? I just there need is, to stand still somewhere. for a second. There, there's de Hold on. There oh, is. You know what? Where's it it, it could be behind the bulkhead in a boat like this. They're bulkhead front and back, and they could have a boat <laughs> full of water if one of those bulkheads oh. is leaking. And that's a nightmare because there's just no way out for it. Well, they're soldiering on. Judging by the way they're holding it, it's, it's got to be at the back. It's heavy it? and it's if, in the if... back. Which means it'll affect the steering of it as well, making it... Presumably, I mean, we might be guessing wrong. I mean, it's not sitting low in the water without them in it, is it? But they were insistent on trying to empty something out. They were. So they're on their final lap. And we go back to the junior boys, K2. No change at the front except the positions of the boats. But Gorvan in the blue boat, still tracking the leader that is now Hungary. So they're very close now to their final portage. They're opposite us in the stands. And you would expect the dark blue boat of Argentina to have a little flurry Going into this portage, unless it well, I mean, they're so confident, maybe they don't even do that. Maybe they'll just do the last little lap. Just cool heads. They've shown us finish. over and over and again that they've got the turn of speed. There no, they go. Here's anyhow. the flurry. <laughs> here's the flurry now. And off they go. <laughs> they won't. Once they get to the front, they'll slow the whole thing down again. They just want to get there first. There's all sorts of trouble at the back of that group. South Africans and Spanish coming together. Portuguese making a run for the front four. These boys slowed right down. All they wanted to do was be at the front. Well, they did two things. It also sent a huge message to everybody else. It was a huge slap down to anybody that fancies their chances of to be mu fair, mu muscling up against them. If they haven't had, got that message by now, yeah. they've been in a different race to the one we're watching. So these boys will be away and clear. Hungarians going with them. Spaniards trying desperately to regain contact. This is the last... Last portage. Last portage, and the group is shrapneling here. 
This was a good move by the Argentinians. The Hungarians, the only ones able to shadow it. Argentina gone. Great takeout. Hungary struggling own. to get the boat. Ah, oh, this is good for Argentina. Hungary struggling. Into the portage they come. Vamos. Vamos. Los Pumas. It's going to be a fairly straightforward last lap for these guys. I don't think even they can believe how much that gap is. Oh. Thanks to the Hungarians not being able to get out of their boat. Great Away go in. Argentina. And there we see what they've actually got as they pull away. And it's a pedestrian put in. Best sight in the world. Final lap. And there's a chunk of water between you and the challengers. So who have we got behind them? It's Hungary and Spain. That's the white boat and the blue boat trying to close them down. Danes. Danes have done well. They've done exceptionally well. Yeah, they well. have. They're vaguely in contact with the back of that group now. That's just hot. That's just guts hot. It's not going to be a podium, but they've certainly paddled their way into the hearts of the spectators here who've appreciated the They've done attitude. a great job. They've, and just the application and sheer guts. So, short lap. And this was really a walk in the park for Vagorvan and Catalano today. Absolute dominance in this race. They'll be moving up to under-23s next year, and I'm sure we'll see them in the under-23 K1, making an impact. Hungary with Zeman and Kekesi. Kekesi, rather. Um, he was third yesterday, Kekesi, and he looks to be second today. It's hard to see how the Spanish can close them down. It's single file around that turn for the medalists. These guys will come back all the way at this speed. And I think I think they're going to offer us a little display over the last 100 metres. And I'm looking forward to it. We, we, we've kind of got a podium settled as they take the turn can, which was kind of not what we were predicting from this junior K2 race. But that we have a champion team that is head and shoulders above the rest is beyond dispute. And this will be... I'm with you, Ivan, will be better than just a, a victory canter into the line because I suspect they're going to put on a show for us here. I also think they're going to move almost seamlessly into the senior ranks. They've yep. been so mature, so strong. They've got that incredible burst of speed that they can pull out as their big weapon whenever they need it. And there's just been nobody else that's been able to match that. Aguiar and Castilla, third place. But here's your first place. Having a little chat. Super well drilled. Just trying to see where they are. About 200 meters to go. They're about I'd less, like to see a little flurry. Less see, than see 200 what sort meters of top up. end speed they've got. June, we've throughout the week we've been heaping praise on how impressive the Argentinian entry has been across all of the events, and as a symbol of how Hungary in second. In what good shape Hung uh, Argentinian paddling is in. Ruben. I don't know why they're looking over their shoulders. Vincent Vergaven, Joachim Catalano, cruising Come down on, to guys. the line. Oh, a roar from the back man there. Let's go. Fire the burners. Show me oh. what you got in that sprint. They're claiming it 20 meters out. You can see how much it means to them. It's been a cut above the rest. It's getting tight for third. Spanish holding off the chase group. We're seeing the Hungarians come across the line now. The Spaniards just holding off the South Africans. There's a great charge from the South African crew. Cochrane and Salmon, they are going to be brave fourth places. That Spanish crew celebrating as much exhilaration as relief. Yeah, 20 meters absolutely. longer, they would that have been was, in a sticky they spot. Were a, they were being hunted there uh, two seconds Ahead of the South Africans. South African, turn, Portugal, ahead of the Spain, Portuguese. France coming to the line. 
Argentinians getting back in their boat after their victory swim. <laughs> oh, they're getting back out of it again. Oh no, somebody else is taking a victory this swim. This is this is such oh, a junior. We're gonna, this is such a junior thing. This watch. is like trying to get water on the fire of testosterone that was burning so <laughs> brightly moments ago. And you have to dampen that down. I, I'm not sure what the deal is if they drift back over that finish line, but I know it doesn't end well for people. Oh, that'd be funny. Generally. Denmark, hats off to them. Great job from the Danes, Hinger and Koch. They had their swim. Cassia and Aguilar were the ones that jumped out. Their boat's now gone sideways and is drifting down. And if it, if it wasn't for the boat in front of them, they would have a sporty challenge to keep that clear of the finish line. The Argentinians are saving their bacon big time. Masked as congratulations, but they don't realize just how much they're helping. Well, there's been... <coughs> they're being warned, I think, by the uh, motorboat there. And I think the Argies are doing their level best to... In fact, they're all, oh my <laughs> word, they are getting incredibly close to going back. I'm not backwards. sure, yeah, I'm not sure what the, <laughs> if the, what the rules are with that. Are they trying to get back into the boat? They are going to drift over the line, though. Oh, uh, okay, so, I'm, 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 I'm saying nothing from here on in. I'm going on the uh, flexibility know. and tolerance of our ITOs. They are going, they are both over the line now. In fact, they're pushing the boy. That's normally hang drawing and quartering, isn't it? Pushing the I, finish boy. <laughs> don't know what's happening. <laughs> Four eighty eight. Here we go. Sweet. Back to Axel a Norden more Skelt. serene. Axel Nordenskjöld and Arvid Soderman in the colours of Sweden. Well, you got your money's worth out of this morning's race. So into Back the to C2. the sea racing. Trying to find them on course. C2 still on their last full lap, so they've got one portage to come. Argentina, two over the line. They took a swim also. Great for them finishing. Wasn't a barrel full of monkeys for them at all, but great application. Finishing with uh, the Germans there. Lucas Mienmans the and Ita Jasper Nienhaus. The Italians. Giulio Zugna, Giacomo Odioni Tiepolo. It's turning into a gala, the side of the finish line. It's, uh, yeah, we've got swimmers all over the place. Back to the seaboat, and we're so fortunate to have the world's premier seaboat commentator, Lawler, in the house, so he's going to give you he, a view of the seaboat. final boat. portage. There's about two and a half minutes to that final portage, and it's going to be very interesting. I think Romero and Campos, probably the best drilled, they're leading in the red boat currently. To their left, European champions, Zucora and Borgil. Three boats together, as they have been pretty much from the start. And there's an attempt on the outside, a little squeeze on from Spain too, to push the pace. We got, uh, the problem here, we've got a, uh, they're just climbing over the waves of the Japanese K2, and that was what that little bit of uh, change of pace was about. K2 really needs to just be. Ireland coming out down of the to way. finish the K2 race. Ben Higgins and Finn Harris. They're going to finish just ahead of the Belgian boat. Of Frederick Schulze and Wannis Lonke. Japanese K2 determined to max TV time on riding the coattails of the C2s. 
So here we go. We've got 30 seconds to this portage and everything to be decided. Three boats together still. Spain two in the white boat. Polish just dropping over the back of Spain one. They just want to go to the right of the pontoon, I think. Here we go. It's going to be very tight on that right-hand side. Spain two will stop early because that's the best way of holding up the poles. A leg over the Polish boat. And Spain go. So Romero, Campos on for a clean sweep. Only Poland can stop that, I think. Romero and Campos up and away. Both, well, first and second in the short course, actually, earlier this weekend. So they both got a turn of speed. I think Poland are going to struggle to overhaul. Vamos, they Diego. They're going away together. It's only the second Spanish cruise. Lost a couple of lengths there. I think we're going to bring this down to a race between Ooh. Poland and Spain now. K2s with a grandstand seat of what's going on in the C2 race, albeit You'd be pretty, right in the traffic pretty lane. hacked off if you were the C2 having to go around those three. Vamos, Diego. Vamos, Manuel. So Spain versus Poland. It's going to come down to who's got the best turn of speed at the end, and you have to fancy Campos for that. Watch that other Spanish boat coming in from the left. No, they're miles they're behind, I think, Dave. I think they're a long way off the pace now. Every now and then, you're lucky enough to be part of a really special moment in paddling history. I think we're about to witness this in the seaboat racing. As Manuel Campos sizes up a hat trick that I can't think of being repeated. I'm sure the historians will throw that back at us with a name from yesteryear. But can't be too many yesteryears. We've only had the short course for a few years now, Dave. True. Just above them in shot, coming back to their finish, was the Great Britain crew of Short and Ross. Finishing their course after that swim in the first 100 metres. It's been a long day for them. They stuck to their task and they're going to have... Oh, he's close. The poles are on the inside the as to finishing. they somehow always have been. Just sneaking inside the boys. This is game on in the C2s. Romero and Campos, half a length advantage over Bourgil. And Zucora. Under the watchful gaze of the ITO on the naughty raft. And they're all around that bottom turn can clean. Game on. We have 500 meters to the line. Campos and Romero, the reigning champions, Borgil and Zucora. The poles Third coming hard. Last time. It's the same first three as it was a year ago, but in a different order. First place remains the same. It's going to be Campos and Romero, but the Poles trying their best. Campos and Romero just pulling out a few inches. They've got a stroke. long way to go, Ivan. They're still at least 250 out. But the Spanish are pulling away just when it counts most. The Poles, they're big units. They're machines in that boat. We've seen their turn of speed. But when it counts most, the Spaniards have played the decisive card in this. They're now gradually pulling away. Manuel Campos, Diego Romero. So Bourgil and Zucora, third last year, are going to increase up to second this year. Busto and Miguel, who were second last year, are going to be back to third. Same first three as last year. The same winner as last year. Two more medals for Spain on the medal tally. 
closing Hungary down. It's going to be tight next Could, time we see the medals. The Hungary. Poles, they've thrown everything and the kitchen sink at it, but it hasn't been enough to derail the bid of Manuel Campos and Diego Romero, who come down to the line. Your 2023 world champions from Spain, Manuel Campos, Diego Romero. Congratulations. The Poles are wrapping up second. And Spain third. So that's three medals for Spain this morning and none for Hungary. So I think that's equals. They, yeah. I think that's Game e on. equals on Game the medal Game on table. in the nation table. Well, three of the best. Mission accomplished for them. That brings... The Moldovans should be next across the line. To a close, our medals for this morning. All the medals decided. Just a few people left out on course still. Time to focus our attention back on the junior boys, K, junior men's K2. Oh, my word. Stefan is sitting with the three crews that came out top of a spectacular scrap. Stefan. Stefan is wrestling with radio mic issues, so we will get him as soon as he is back online. We predicted spice and drama. We expected the young K2s to be strutting around like roosters with their chests puffed out in a small cage, and that's exactly what we got. I mean, that was an eventful race, wasn't it? I From start uh, to finish. I expected one or two incidents. I didn't expect wall-to-wall <laughs> -wall drama. So I think we're just trying to get Stefan a new microphone so we can get those interviews because uh, it was a great racing from the junior boys this morning. Bruno Cochran and Luke Salmon, the, the Joe Burgers, punching above their weight and tantalizingly short of the podium, but... Absolutely. I mean, there were so many good performances in there. I mean, the, all, all the crews who took a swim and carried on. Yeah. That's, yeah it's not easy. The, 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 emotional, the emotional sort of seesaw of that, where you're going around, I don't want to do it, I do want to do it. It's, it's a horrible place to be. But... Uh, the display really. Oh, here we go. Stefan's on. Ladies and gentlemen, big hands for Argentina. Yes. Yeah. And uh, this uh, second position, Hungary. How was the race for you? Tell us a little bit. Uh, it was very tough, but uh, we made some mistakes. But uh, I think overall we did good. So we are satisfied with our performance. It was quite rough, the first uh, two laps. Uh, many boats uh, doing many things and a lot of tur turns, a lot, a lot of fights. How was that? Yeah, there were a lot of collisions, but uh, I think we pulled, pulled those off pretty well because we didn't really get into a lot of fights. We were just like chilling in the back, usually. Uh, yeah, so I think we did good. Chilling in the back, that, that's a good expression of, of uh, how you, your tactics. Was that your race plan? Uh, I am very happy with this uh, the competition with my performance is very good and my uh, mate, he's, he's very good too. A big hands for Hungary! And bronze medal to Spain. Estamos muy contentos. Ha sido un resultado inesperado porque en las primeras vueltas hemos sido colocados atrás del grupo y ha sido muy duro, pero en la última vuelta hemos, nos hemos recuperado y hemos conseguido el objetivo. Estamos muy contentos. Muy contentos. 
It was a tough race also for you. A lot of collisions and a lot of, lot of struggle in the group. Uh, how was that? Eh, ha sido una carrera muy difícil porque estábamos atrás y la penalización nos ha venido muy mal y había muchos barcos en el grupo y, pero al final hemos conseguido la medalla y estamos muy felices. Big hands for Spain. Thanks, Ivan. Well, that's a race that's going to be talked about for years and years to come. And if you want to package a highlights reel, that's going to look like a. A Hollywood blockbuster, that was it. What a race. So, running a rule over the outcome of that race, Vincent Vergaven and Joachim Catalano winning that one in the colors of Argentina, Zemin and Kakesi taking the silver for Hungary, Spain taking it into bronze with Castilla and Aguila. Bruno Cochran and Luke Salmon will be stoked as heck with a fourth place. Portugal taking fifth through Batista and Bento. Lago and Fernandes taking it for a Spanish sixth. France taking in the colors. A Spanish sixth. Fleury France. and Tutti taking seventh. And one of the great performances of the day, Oliver Koch and Anton Hinge having fallen out, racing into eighth. Magical result. Tej Nora and Vesir from the Czech Republic. North Skuld and Soderman for Sweden. Jared Shrimpton and Riley Smith, the youngest crew on the, uh, on the course, under 15s. They've got three years potentially at this level. Coming home within 11th, pat yourselves on the back. Bruno and Pizarro, Miman and Nihaus, Zugna and Tipolo, Ben Higgins and Finn Harris in, in the colors of Ireland, and Schulze and Lonke from Belgium. Big field here, and uh, two DNFs, but uh, Philippe Aguero and Jorge Pereira, the Uruguayans, wrapping up a great week for them, Aiden Han and Lachlan Dal Salo in the colors of Oz. The second Hungarian boat, Mate Kolek and David Kiss, just not their day today. Nothing going right for them. Team GB's William Short and James Ross finishing, and the Japanese crew of Bunzo, Ueno, and Mizuki Maeda wrapping up the list of finishes. What a race, and it's going to be a Another wonderful gold job medal for, for Spain in uh, spice C2, together, yeah. all the drama together. Four can, and five gold I see Ivan has C2 got C2 the uh, C2 paddles. Congratulations. Thanks. I, I am very happy with uh, five, medal, oh, oh, five gold medal consecutives in, in between uh, 2028 and 2023. That's an amazing achievement. Congratulations. And Manuel, you do have a f a four, a cuatro a gold medal in C2. Sí, es mi cuarta medalla consecutiva en, en C2. Estoy muy contento de, de poder hacer aquí el triplete de oro y quisiera agradecer a, a nuestro entrenador, José Luis Otero Padín, que estará en casa viéndonos. Quisiera agradecer también al fisio del equipo, que me ha ayudado mucho, que, que he estado con un problema físico la última semana. También quisiera agradecer a, a mi mujer y, y a mis hijos. Y, y también dedicarle a la hermana de Tania Álvarez, que está embarazada. Amanda, un saludo desde aquí. How was this race compared to the others? Thank you. How was this race uh, compared to the others you have done? In 2018, perdón, competí con Oscar Gaña. Esa fue mi primera medalla. Y desde esa, pues, fueron todas consecutivas hasta ahora. No, la pena fue el año del COVID, que no hubo campeonato del mundo, pero estoy muy contento. Big hands for Spain. And the silver, another silver medal to, to uh, Poland. You have had a, quite a lot of medals over the years as well uh, for Poland in this event. Yes, my zdobyliśmy tutaj już trzy medale. Cieszymy się z tego. Dzisiaj w Hiszpanii byli dużo lepsi na finiszu. Staraliśmy się im gdzieś tam uciec. Niestety nie udało się. Druga łódka z Hiszpanii troszkę im pomogła w wyścigu. No, ale mimo tego cieszymy się. To był naprawdę ciężki wyścig. Dziękuję. And uh, uh, tell us a little bit uh, about the race. How was 
this is uh, this was a good uh, game uh, how the cheese and uh, the Manuel Campos and Diego Romero is the have the left level heart in this game and congrats big hands for Poland <laughs> and a bronze medal as well to Spain. Uh, congratulations. Thank you very much. So, so uh, tell us a little bit of the race. Thank you. ¿Qué tal? Ah, regata dura, tirando siempre. Aquí con los dos mejores C2 del mundo a pelear hasta el final. Big hands for the bronze okay. medalists from Spain. Thanks, Stefan. Catching up with uh, the three C2 crews at the front. Uh, there has been a dramatic development in the meantime because there's the official result as you see it. The Poles crossed the line in second. They were slapped with a 30-second penalty for an infringement obstructing boats on the portage takeout. So it's going to change the shakeup, and it's going to be a Spain 1-2. Manuel Campos and Diego Romero completing the fairy tale uh, week for them here. Manuel Campos picking up the hat trick, his fourth medal at this level, uh, gold in color. Fernando Busto and Diego Miguel uh, wrapping up the second uh, medal for Spain. So that'll be a silver for them, even though they crossed the line in third. And Zucora and Borgil will now have to digest the consequences of that 30-second penalty that they've been saddled with. The Moldovans, the Tarnvish brothers, wrapping up the fourth place. Zidai and Jelani taking fifth. And uh, the balance of the field not completing the 21K course. So that sorts out the medals at the end of the... Uh, Humdinger of a morning session. My word, it really has been something that has left the nerves jangling. And we can now compose ourselves, catch our breath, because in a couple of minutes' time, what a belter this is going to be. The K2 woman, all starting at...